Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello, hello, open your eyes. Can you just wait a moment? I'll give you instructions. Okay, can you go and call an ambulance and ask them to come to Sainsbury's? We have an unconscious, not breathing male. And could you ask them to bring a defibrillator if they have one? And can you tell me how long they're going to be? Okay. Ambulance, please. We've got an unconscious uh, male um, Sainsbury supermarket, Dundee. He's not breathing. And CPR is beginning. Yeah. Okay. They're going to stay on the line. Uh, and they've the, the sent an ambulance. Going to be as quickly as possible. Can you go and see if they've got a defibrillator in the okay. store? Yeah, I'm going to leave the phone here. I'm going to find a defib if they have one. Right. You just follow the instructions on the pad. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stand clear. Stand clear. Don't touch the casualty. Press flashing shock button. Shock one delivered. It is safe to touch the patient. Begin CPR now. Continue. Continue for one minute, 45 seconds. Continue for 15 seconds. Continue for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop CPR. Stop now. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing. No shock advised. It is safe to touch the patient. If needed, begin CPR. If you find a casualty, think doctors A, B, C. D is for danger. Check for danger before approaching any casualty. Your own safety is your first priority. Then to others around you, and finally, to the casualty. Keep yourself safe at all times. R is for responses. You need to find out if the casualty is conscious or unconscious. Approach safely and ask them if they can hear you and if they are all right. Gently shake their shoulders. Make sure you speak loudly in both ears in case they are deaf in one. Whilst you are doing this, look, listen and feel for a response. If the casualty responds, don't move them unless they are in immediate danger. Talk to them and try to find out what is wrong with them and get help. If the casualty does not respond, 
then S. S is for shout for help. Ask your helper or any bystanders to wait. You will need them to help you. Continue with your checks. A is for airway. You need to open the airway to give the casualty a chance to breathe. Place your hand on his forehead and two fingers on the point of his chin. Gently tilt his head back to allow his airway to open. Sometimes when someone is unconscious, their airway is obstructed by their tongue. You need to open the airway to give the casualty the best chance of survival. Next is B for breathing. Now the airway is open, you need to check if the casualty is breathing for themselves. Whilst still supporting their head in the tilted position, put your ear to their mouth. Look down their chest to see if it is moving. Listen for breath sounds and feel for breath on your cheek. Keep checking for up to 10 seconds. Sometimes a casualty will make irregular noisy sounds. This is not normal breathing. If the casualty is breathing, then put them into the recovery position. Then organise help by calling 999 or 112. If the casualty is not breathing, then ask your helper to call 999 or 112 and ask for an ambulance. Tell the emergency services that you have an unconscious casualty who is not breathing. Tell them where you are and answer any questions they ask you. Then ask your helper to try to find an AED or defibrillator. They are usually found in public places such as shopping centres or railway stations. Some schools and universities might also have their own defibrillators. Then begin CPR, letter C. Begin by giving 30 chest compressions, then two rescue breaths. To give chest compressions, kneel beside the casualty. Place one hand in the centre of the casualty's chest. Place your other hand on top and interlock your fingers. Then, keeping your arms in a locked position, press down on the chest. You need to press about twice per second and press down about five or six centimetres. Do this 30 times. Then move on to rescue breaths. Tilt the head back like you did when you were checking for breathing and pinch the nose. Look quickly into the mouth for any objects that might be causing an obstruction. Take a normal breath, then make a seal with your lips over their mouth. Blow until the chest rises, about one to two seconds. Stop and let the chest fall. Then give a second rescue breath. If for any reason the breaths don't go in, check you have their head tilted properly. Don't attempt more than two rescue breaths. Move on to the next round of chest compressions. Continue with the chest compressions and rescue breaths at a ratio of 30 to two. Keep going until help arrives and takes over. Do what the ambulance crew tell you. Alternatively, the casualty might begin to breathe on their own. If so, put them in the recovery position and monitor them until help arrives. CPR is hard work if it's done properly. If you are really exhausted, and can't do any more, then, if there is no one else there to help, take a break. If there are other people to help, if possible, 
Rotate after every two minutes so that you don't get too tired. If you can't or don't want to give rescue breaths, do hands only CPR. This is better than doing nothing at all. If an AED or a defibrillator is available, switch the machine on and follow the voice prompts. It will tell you exactly what you need to do. Apply the pads to the casualty's chest. Look at the diagram on the pads. It will tell you exactly where to put them. Then continue to follow the voice prompts. If a shock is needed, the AED will tell you what to do and when to do it. It is important to make sure that no one touches the casualty when the shock is being delivered. Your job as a first aider is to keep everyone away from the casualty during this process. Press the flashing shock button when you are told to do so. The AED will then analyse the heart rhythm and tell you what to do next. Keep following the instructions until the emergency services arrive.